My name is Ben Orenstein, and this is Write Code Faster, Expert Level Vim. Now, when I found out that I was going to be giving a talk at RailsConf, one of the first things that I did was to go out and read about how to give a good technical talk. And one of the best things that I read was, most technical talks have an introduction that is too long. They spend too much time in the introduction, and it's really better to cut the introduction and dive right into the real meat. So, that's what I'm going to do. So, without delay, here are my four top techniques for reaching Vim mastery. Number one, learn to use the Vim help. The reason I put this first is because reading the Vim help will give you the highest return on investment of any other activity. If you want to master Vim, it is a terrific idea to spend a few minutes every day in the Vim help. Now, there are two problems with this. First of all, uh, it takes some practice to get good at reading the Vim help. Uh, Vim's help is incredibly comprehensive, very thorough, uh, but it can take a little bit of work to parse it. You have to learn some of the syntax that they use, uh, and also a few commands for navigating around it efficiently. Uh, luckily, I'm going to be showing you those in a few minutes. Uh, the second problem with this is you're going to forget what you read. And that brings me to my second rule for Vim Mastery, which is keep a cheat sheet on your desk. Now, learning Vim is a process of accretion. Now, accretion means to gradually increase something by steadily adding smaller parts. So the way you learn Vim is by slowly accreting Vim commands. This is the only way to become an expert, is steadily to learn a little bit every day. Uh, now, the best way to do this is to focus on just a few at a time, and that's what a cheat sheet does for you. Uh, I recommend you put 7 to 10 commands that you're trying to learn on your cheat sheet, and then keep your eyes open for opportunities to use them. You should always be looking out and trying to find excuses, even, to use these commands. And the reason is, you don't build muscle memory until you use a command in practice. So in reality, we don't actually want to have any commands on the cheat sheet. We want to have them in our brain. You want those hardwired so you don't even have to think about them. But the only way you can get that hardwiring and get them into your muscle memory is by actually using them in practice. You need to actually have a situation where you're doing some editing and you've reached a point where you can use one of those commands and you think, oh, I know how to do this. And then you actually use the command. That will actually build those neural pathways in your brain that will make it automatic eventually. So always be looking out for those chances to do it. And the best way uh, to have those at your fingertips is with a little cheat sheet. Now, I believe that building this muscle memory is so important that if I am editing and I realize I've missed an opportunity to use a command I'm trying to learn, I will actually undo what I've done. I'll back up and use the command and do it the right way. I think it's that important for building muscle memory. Okay, now the third most important technique for building Vim Mastery. Keep track of your annoyances. So what are the annoyances? Annoyances are when you're using Vim and you do something that feels efficient. I'm sorry, inefficient. Or if you have a mistake that you make commonly when you're using the editor. Or something that seems harder than it should be. I think you need to capture those in a list. Now let me give you an example. Um, the way you quit Vim is by hitting colon Q. And that's colon lowercase q. Now, about three or four times a day, for a long time, I would accidentally hit colon uppercase q. And Vim would say, oh, that's not a command, uh, and not quit itself. Uh, so finally, I put this on my annoyance list that said, find a way to bind colon capital Q to colon q. And then one day, I took the two minutes it took to figure this out and rebound it. And now, whenever I make that typo, Vim will actually quit itself. Uh, this is tremendous. When you slowly build up um, and slowly get rid of these things that annoy you and slow you down, uh, it has a huge impact over time. That capital Q rebinding saves me a couple of seconds every day and half a percentage of annoyance every day. And that's big. I'm a lot happier uh, when I'm writing code because I have Vim so customized for how I like to do things. Um, I like to think of this process as slowly sanding down the rough edges of my environment. Now, I think it's important to put these annoyances on a list because as programmers, one of our biggest challenges is to stay in the zone, is to stay in our flow. And so when you're in the middle of writing some code and you've got the program loaded in your head and something bothers you, you don't want to stop what you're doing, drop what you're doing, and open up the Vim help and start looking for a better way to switch between buffers or something like that. Um, 
But at the same time, you don't want to miss this opportunity to capture something that has bothered you. So I recommend keeping this list and writing down all these little things that are bothersome. By the way, a great place for this annoyance list is on the back of your cheat sheet. Okay, now, finally, the fourth and final technique for reaching Vim Mastery is learn all the single letter commands. Now, I imagine most people have heard of the Pareto Principle. Uh, it's also called the 80-20 Rule. 80% 80 of the results tend to come from 20% of the effort. If you want to get 80% of the goodness of Vim with 20% of the effort, you should learn the single letter commands. Now, why? Um, Vim's design philosophy is that if you want to accomplish something that has to be accomplished often, it should be accomplishable in very few keystrokes. So, the most important commands are bound to single letter keys. Therefore, if you don't know all of them, chances are you're missing big pieces of functionality, you're missing important stuff, and uh, you're probably doing things in a much less efficient way than you could be. So I recommend quizzing yourself and actually looking down at your keyboard and saying, okay, do I know what all these keys do? Look at each one and say, do I know what T does? What about capital T? Don't forget that all these commands have capital variants. Uh, what about semicolon? So ask yourself if you know those. T, capital T, and semicolon, I use probably 15 or 20 times a day. Maybe even 15 or 20 times each. Those are super important. If you don't know what even one of those does, you're missing out on something really great that's going to really speed you up. So it is absolutely worth your time to learn all the single letter commands. Um, now I found a wonderful cheat sheet for this. It's a graphical cheat sheet. Uh, it's an outline of the keyboard. And in each letter, it will give you uh, what that uh, uh, command is that's bound to that letter. And I'm going to give you a link to this at the end of my talk. Uh, but that's a great way uh, to put next to, uh, a great thing to put next to your cheat sheet. Uh, so those are the four techniques for reaching Vim Mastery. First one, learn to use the Vim Help. Second, keep a cheat sheet on your desk. Third, keep track of things that annoy you. And fourth, learn all the single letter commands. And now just as a bonus, here's a fifth. Um, one of the best things about Vim is that it lets you keep your hands right on the home row. One of the worst things about Vim is that you have to reach up to escape to get out of insert mode. Um, don't do that. Personally, I have rebound caps lock to escape because it's closest to the home row. Um, other people will like to bind other keys. You can also use control uh, open square brace that will also send an escape code. Uh, whatever you do, I just recommend not reaching all the way up to escape. It's too slow. Uh, once you rebind something else to it and you're going to feel how fast it is, you're going to be really glad you did. So, that's the first few minutes of my talk. Uh, if you found this interesting, there's going to be a lot more. This has been about eight minutes, so I got about almost 40 more minutes of material after this. Uh, my talk is on Tuesday. Uh, first thing, it's in the very first slot. Uh, not on the Monday tutorials, but it's one of the, it's one of the very first talks on the first day. Uh, I'd love it if you came. Uh, I hope this was useful for you anyway, and uh, I'll see you all at RailsConf. Take care.